The prices are $400 for RX Vega 56, $500 for RX Vega 64, and we think $600 for RX Vega 64 Aqua, the liquid cooled version, which is a price that's basically derived from the delta between the one card and then the bundle pack. Speaking of, there are bundle packages as well, which are your usual discount plus games plus slight increase in price. We'll talk about those, but the main pricing index is 400 to five or 600, depending on what you're looking at. We are also covering today the finalized specifications, not rumored anymore for RX Vega 64 and 56. And then we'll further be going into information on architecture in a separate video. So we have a separate deeper dive. I'm not gonna say deep dive because it's not quite as far as I want to go. We'll have more for you closer to launch, but we will have a deeper dive into Vega architecture in a separate video. So subscribe for that if you aren't already, but let's dig into RX Vega 56 and 64 for today. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB closed loop liquid cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus three 120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake ring fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. Ignoring Vega FE, the flagship RX Vega product is the 64. It has 64 CUs, hence the name. RX Vega 64, $500 for the reference card, indicates that we should expect 500 to probably 600 for AIB partner models, your usual Asus or MSI or other cards of that ilk. So we're looking at that for the price range. There's a bit of room above that for liquid cooled models. We are aware of some from AIB partners that will be coming out. Can't talk about who specifically just yet, but there will be liquid cooled RX Vega models. And based on what you've seen with our own testing of liquid cooling Vega, FE version even, reducing power leakage improves your, one, your power consumption and efficiency, and two, the performance in terms of clock headroom overall in a non-trivial way. The bundle pricing. So uh, there are three different bundles. We'll talk about them more in a moment, but the one for the liquid cooled card is $700. So you spend 700, you get the liquid cooled 64 version, and then you get the other items that are thrown in there, which we'll get to. And so we basically assumed, well, it's probably $600 because everything else is one step up, $100 more for the bundle versus for the standalone card, 56 or 64. Here's a chart we made of the known specifications for RX Vega 56 and 64. The names are indicative of CU count on each. RX Vega 56 has 56 CUs or compute units, and so has 3584 cores, 64 cores per compute unit as always. The RX Vega 64 has 64 CUs, equating to 4096 cores. Keep in mind that AMD and NVIDIA core counts are not comparable directly as the architectures differ, just kind of usual disclaimer for anyone new here. Each CU has four TMUs with AMD's architecture, so a 64 CU RX Vega card will run 256 TMUs, while the 56 CU option will run 224 TMUs. Vega 10's render backend also allows it to push 64 pixels per clock, whereas Polaris 10 did 32 pixels per clock, so a bit of a change to the render backend, which are responsible for delta color compression in memory and color buffer compression to save power and memory bandwidth and things like that, general optimizations and performance bandwidth and power. The cards also have a 4 megabyte L2 cache and use the same 2048-bit memory interface as the Vega FE card. That means that RX Vega is still running two HBM stacks, which you saw in our Vega FE coverage, except now they are at four gigabytes per stack for eight gigabytes total instead of 16. There's a single graphics engine as well, four ACEs, which we've detailed in the past with our Polaris deep dive last year, and four of the revamped geometry engines. People like to talk about TDP, which can be a bit confusing because there's a difference between the total GPU power and the total board power. TGP is something we independently confirmed at 165 watts for RX Vega 56 and 220 watts for the RX Vega 64 model, with total board power for the 56 estimated at 210 watts on the reference model and about 290 watts for the RX Vega 64 air-cooled model. The Aqua model has a total board power target of 350 watts, one note here, AMD changed these numbers a decent bit depending on who you're talking to. So there's a chance that other outlets report different numbers, maybe of 150, for example, instead of 165. But again, that's TGP, not total board power. And we were ultimately told 165 by someone with a fair bit of authority. So that's the number we'll go with. As for power profile tuning, we asked whether the power changes were a result of just tightening the power target versus FE, or if actual power performance features were enabled under the hood. 
Turns out RX Vega isn't just a matter of restricting power target. They're actually doing something for that power optimization and lowering it overall, other than maybe the Aqua model. We couldn't get explicit examples at this time. One thing we do know is that the voltage targets change. So this is something that can be done through drivers. The voltage checks are at different frequencies than FE and voltages we're told should be lower per frequency point. We'd also expect that this would align with our findings in the undervolting testing on Vega Frontier Edition, where power consumption can equalize while improving performance. It's still AVFS, but it's just a better tuning profile than FE. We also asked AMD's architects, including Mike Mantor, about whether TSBR was actually disabled in Vega Frontier Edition or if it was just a rumor. There's a lot of talk about that. The official confirmation, at least loosely by the architects, was that tile-based rasterization was in fact disabled for Frontier Edition's launch, which we think mostly aligns with statements made about pushing the card to make it to market in time. And the team also noted that TSBR will be enabled on both Vega FE and RX Vega on the launch of RX Vega. We asked about expected performance or power consumption improvements, but weren't given any specifics at this time. So unfortunately we can't quantify how much that change will matter or in which applications it will matter. Wait for launch on that though, we'll have all that information eventually. As for launch date, there isn't one yet. This appears to be a paper launch, so we have specifications and pricing, but we know that the launch date is sometime in the middle of August. One more big thing is the clocks. So as we know it now, RX Vega 64, the reference model, will run a base clock of 1247 megahertz and a boost clock of 1546 megahertz. And just as a reminder, Vega FE had a targeted boost clock of 1600, but very rarely held that clock without increasing the power budget. And you could undervolt things and kind of equalize power plus 15 watts. But uh, the point is that RX Vega may be different from Vega FE, where FE just couldn't hold 1600. What it tended to do out of box, and this wasn't a thermal limit, it was a power limit, was it would sit at DPM five or six rather than seven. There are seven total DPM states. And at five or six, five is 1440 megahertz top of my head, and six top of my head is 1528 megahertz, I wanna say. And so it would sit at one of those two frequencies rather than 1600 because it was hitting a power limit. So that's a bit different potentially from RX Vega because RX Vega one is a lower clock, and two, it has some power differences that we'll be talking about as well. The architecture overall looks very familiar. The specs look very familiar. So there's not a lot of new stuff here to learn if you already know Polaris from our 480 deep dive. That is not to say that Vega is not fresh and interesting. It's just to say that if you have a base understanding, you can apply it here and you have a pretty good starting point of understanding Vega. So that stated, a few additional items to note include power saving features. We spoke with AMD at this event and learned definitively, not rumors this time, that specific power fe saving features of the card were disabled for Vega FE when it launched. And that was to quote, get it out the door, which is sort of what we said in our coverage. They wanted to hit quarter two and they did it by about two days. So they hit quarter two, but some things were disabled and that makes power consumption look a whole lot higher from what we've been told on those versus on Vega RX version, gaming version. A few other items of note, the video card we're showing is a silver model, which is a limited edition. The main version will be black and we'll have a logo on the fan as you'd expect. In addition to that, there's a card we didn't talk about, the WX Professional Series card, the WX9100 Radeon card. And then sort of alongside that, there's a new SSG card, which has on video card board, solid state drives basically for two terabytes of on card storage for large project files and applications like AutoCAD or something similar to that. But those are out of scope for today. As for the packs, the bundles and things like that, this is all kind of more marketing side stuff, which we don't, we don't normally talk about this kind of thing, but it is somewhat significant here. So just kind of walk through it. The packs are, there's a black pack, a red pack and an aqua pack. The last one being quite obvious what it is. The packs are $600 for Vega 64 air card with a $200 rebate on a uh, 34 inch ultra wide FreeSync display. And then that also includes a $100 discount on a Ryzen 7 plus X370 motherboard combo and two games. So basically you pay $100 more than the base price for the card. You get a $100 rebate on an X370 plus R7 combo. 
and you get a $200 rebate on a, on a monitor, which is a large expense. So you better, you just kind of consumer advice here. I'm not saying it's a bad deal. What I'm saying is consumer advice, you better want that thing before I told you about this combo to get value out of it. Uh, if, if you're in a position where you are trying to, to use the $200 rebate by adding an expense that was not expected, there's a problem. But uh, it's not a bad deal. It's actually a pretty good deal if you already want those things. If you already want R7, X370, and a FreeSync display, it's a good deal. If you did not want them, then look at the price without those things, and it's $100 cheaper, and you save $100 of actual cash, not rebates. Now, last thing is they include two games which may or may not be of interest to you. The games vary by region, so we won't specify them here because they will probably change depending on where you live. And that, is, that pretty much wraps it up. So $600 for the Vega 64 version of that air-cooled. And then there's a, another one, Aqua is $700, liquid-cooled plus the same things. The last one's RX Vega 56 at a $500 price point. They're all $100 offset. So discounts are the same for all of them, all that stuff. And then for the deeper dive architecture stuff, check back for that shortly. But otherwise, this gets you the very basics and hopefully a quick format. So thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more or you can go to gamersnexus.net for the article. Oh, also important of note, the Threadripper information that we got is not as detailed as RX Vega. We're not going to do a standalone video for the Threadripper news because a lot of it's out there already. If you want what we already uh, what we already knew, plus the new stuff from this weekend, because there is some new stuff, including one new SKU of Threadripper that wasn't officially talked about before. Click the article below. It'll all be in there, including a recap of this. And that'll do it for this one. So subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly. Or you can just check us out at the store, GamersNexus.Squarespace.com, where we have shirts like this one, the new GN Anniversary shirt. I'll see you all next time.